set x in V such that T x is equal to 0 in V prime. All those elements in V which are mapped to 0 in V prime. Null vector. Yeah, exactly the same definition, but this is a vector space. Now, let x be in this null space. Take a, take a vector from the null space. And then ask what happens. So, ask what happens if I act this operator on x and this operator on x. Okay? That is basically this is a map, this is a map, this is a map from V to V, this is a map from V to V prime. So, if I if I act this on x, I will get a vector in V, T on that I will ve get a vector in V prime. Now, this will take me to V prime, this will still have a V prime. So, I have to ask a question, what is the vector in V prime that I will get? So, take a vector and then ask what is T g of x is equal to d prime g t of x. Now, what do I get? What is t of x? 0. So, representation acting on 0 will give me 0 only. So, this is equal to 0. So, what did what did I show? T acting on dg of x is equal to 0, which implies dg of x, where is this? This is in V, T acting on that is 0, so this is also in null space. So, this belongs to n of t. Now, remember g is arbitrary. g is arbitrary. Now, dg of x is in n t for all x for all g. What does it mean? n t is not only a subspace, but it is an invariant subspace. Because I take vectors in n t, this group operation will not generate any vector outside n t. So, n of t is an invariant subspace of which vector space? V. So, this tells me that n of t is an invariant subspace of V. But what is invariant under what? Inver invariant under the action of representation D. But by definition, D is an irreducible representation. So, if D is an irreducible representation on V, there should not exist any non-trivial invariant subspaces. If non-trivial invariant subspaces exist, then D is reducible. But we started with an assumption that T is an irreducible representation. Correct? So, you should not have any non-trivial invariant subspaces. Okay? So, since D is irrep, irreducible representation, N of T has only two options. One is, it is 0 that is trivial invariant subspace or n of t is the full space. Since d is irreducible representation, we cannot have non-trivial invariant subspaces. So, only a subspace invariant subspaces possible are trivial invariant subspaces. So, n of t is either 0 
or the full space. Now, if n of t is the full space, what can you say about the t? That means every vector in V is mapped to 0. When is it possible like that? When t itself is 0. Imagine t is a matrix. You take any vector, multiply this matrix, you are getting 0. That means all elements of this matrix should be 0 only. So, if n of V If n of v is e uh, sorry n of t is equal to v, this implies t is equal to zero. Okay, but if we want non-zero t, if we want non-zero t, then n of t has to be zero. Okay, so for t not equal to zero n of t has to be equal to 0. Okay. If the null space of any transformation t is equal to 0, then t is a 1 to 1 mapping. Okay. This implies t is 1 1. So, from this <laughs> from this graph, from this side, we considered a null set, null space of t. If you take an element of null space and using this intertwining operation, we show that this null space is an invariant subspace. Since the representation is an irreducible representation, we cannot have non-trivial invariant subspaces. So, your null space has to be either 0 or the full space. If it is the full space, then the transformation itself is 0. For non-zero transformation, we should have T as 1 to 1 mapping. Now, in this particular side, define R of T as range of T. R of t as range of t. Now, R of t is a subset of is a subspace of V prime. You may recall when we talked about vector spaces, for every linear transformation, we con constructed four vector spaces. Null space, range, column, column space and row space. That is vector space spanned by columns, vector space spanned by rows. Four, four vector spaces we constructed for every given linear transformation. So, this, these are the two vector spaces I am using. One is null other is range. Range is a subspace of V prime. Now, if x is in V implies T x is in what? V prime or T x is in R of T which is a subset of V prime anyway. Now, I use this. Now, T x is in R of T, right? T x is in R of T. So, let me put, let me use this intertwining relation here. T d g of x is equal to d prime g of T x. T prime g of T x. Now, what can you say here? This is in R of T. So, D prime of this is going to be 
Where is, where is that going to be? It is, it is going to be in V prime. Correct? So, but this is equal to this. Correct? Where is this going to be? See, this is going to be in R of t. Now, this entire thing is going to be in V prime. This is going to be in V. This entire thing is going to be in R of t. So, right hand side is an element in V equal to some element in R of t. That means, right hand side is also in R of t, correct? So, that means, I started with an element T x in R of t and then obtained an element in R of t. And this is arbitrarily true for every g. So, this implies, this argument implies R of t is an invariant subspace invariant subspace of V prime. Again, since D prime is an irreducible representation, R of t can be 0 or R of t can be total V prime. If R of t equal to 0 means what? All elements in V are mapped onto 0. That means t is equal to 0. Correct? So, if R of t is equal to 0, that implies t is equal to 0. Now, for non-zero t, The only option we have is R of t is equal to V prime. What can we say about this t if R of t is equal to V prime? That means range is the total space. T is on 2. Correct? If the range of t is total space, then t is on 2. This implies t is on 2. So, from this I have shown t is 1 1, from this I have shown t is on 2, that means t is invertible, which means t is non-singular. So, if t is non-zero, then it is non-singular. So, non-zero, non-singular are zero. These are the only two options. So, we can prove from here that if t is non-zero, t is 1 1, t is non-zero, t is on 2. So, t is invertible or non-singular. If t is equal to 0, so th that is another case. So, this is the proof. Here we are talking about what happens to t. Okay, if t is equal to 0, that means you do not have any such any such intertwining transformation. Okay, so, you can say that they are inequivalent. See, for example, I can write d of g as t inverse d prime of g t. So, it is like a similarity transformation. If no such t exists, you cannot, you cannot connect them. Correct? I have little bit struggled to put the entire proof on the board. I, I would have preferred to keep the statement also, but anyway, this serves as the statement. So, that if you have some questions, about the proof. So, this lemma, Schur's lemma is crucial for all other results that we have in uh, group theory, for all other applications that we have in group theory. Yes, we can prove what is called uh, orthogonality theorem, great orthogonality theorem or grand orthogonality theorem <coughs> using this lemma. You take an element from the, uh, from R t, and then show that when d prime of g acts on that element, it will be within R t itself. So, I am taking an element called T x in R t 
and operating D prime on this. From the right hand side, it is an elliptic.